Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to go through how I painted up my Hanya mask. And I haven't touched this in quite a while, um, but I painted one up. It's available in my shop as a, um, like just a raw cast. So you can head to creaturesofnat.com and you can find it in the mask section. I also have a lower jaw that is finished and ready to go. So you can find that in my shop as well. And the reason why I didn't put this red mask in my shop for sale is because I had a little bit of problem with the paint where it wasn't drying and certain things were a bit sticky so I decided not to sell this one but to actually display it in my own house because I really like Hanya masks um, but I will do some in the future and if you are interested I can also do like a painting commission um, that would just be extra on top of the raw casts of the Hanya mask. And if you haven't already seen um, the sculpting video for this mask, you can uh, check back on my channel. It is on there and I'll also try and remember to link it down below. I always seem to forget to link things in the bottom. So um, if I do forget, you can remind me in the comments and I'll uh, pop it in the description box. All right, so with these masks, the horns come um, not attached to the actual head itself. You have to attach it with some epoxy sculpt, um, which I'm happy to do uh, if you'd like, or um, I could just leave it as like a project mask. Um, and then once that's all dried, I go ahead and just give it a coat of some um, primer paint, which I use for my art dolls. I use the same primer paint, which is a background paint for canvases. I prefer to use that because it works really well for some resin pieces. And so the red paint is the paint that I had uh, some problems with. It is a uh, paint from the brand Golden. I really like the color of the paint and the texture, but um, it has some tackiness issues, which I probably won't use this paint again for anything really, apart from um, canvases. Um, so I wouldn't really recommend the red um, paint for resin things, just because it, it had a lot of trouble actually drying on the resin. So I don't know whether it was a reaction to some of the chemicals in the resin and the paint or itself or there's something wrong with this red paint or it's the red pigment I don't know what is wrong with it but um, yeah I had a few issues with it drying and it was sort of all gummy and stuff so uh, I removed the parts that were gummy over and over again um, and it seemed to still do it um, I used acetone to remove it and um, it was just not working. So it also happened with a black paint. Um, it is a, I think it was the brand uh, Derivian Matisse. It was, I think it's a background paint as well or something, but it had the same sort of texture as his red paint. And those two paints just did not work with this resin. So I don't know why, I've never had a problem with these paints before, um, but I can insert a little snippet now. So th this is what I'm talking about. You can see the paint is really easily rubbed off. So I just painted the back of it um, a black and you can also see a little spot on top of the head that has been rubbed off. Uh, there's nowhere else that actually had this problem. It was just in certain spots. Uh, it just stayed really tacky and um, just would roll off whenever you sort of put any sort of pressure on it. Uh, it just never ever dried. So yeah, like I said, I used some um, acetone and uh, removed, well acetone free nail polish remover and I removed the paint. It seemed to work quite well um, because I didn't really want to put something too harsh onto the resin itself because resin can be a little fragile when it comes to putting chemicals on things. So I went for the acetone free nail polish. So I'll probably stick to my Chroma Quirrell and um, Jacquard paints because I've never had any sort of problem with paint curing or drying or sticking to the resin. Um, just your typical paint that can come off with um, a little bit of force on resin, that's pretty common. Um, that's why you prime things. But in terms for golden paints and stuff, I probably won't use it again um, and I will be weary of uh, any that, that that black Derivian Matisse paint as well um, just to make sure it doesn't happen again um, because the way those two were made were very very similar and they have the same sort of smell and texture um, and they're quite thick so uh, definitely won't use them again. 
Alright, so once I've painted the first layer of red, you can see it covers really well. So I think I put one more coat of paint on this just to get the deeper red look. Um, so I went ahead and painted the inside of the mouth with um, that same <laughs> black paint. Surprisingly, this paint in the mouth area didn't actually have any sort of problem drying. Uh, it was just on the back and the top of the head. No idea, maybe some chemical leached through um, the resin itself. Maybe I didn't mix it properly or something, who knows. Um, and also I drilled in a little slot in the mouth area so you can breathe and I also did the nostrils and the eye area so you can actually see out of the eye holes. I also painted the inside of the nostrils in a black colour, just being really, really careful where I'm actually putting that black paint because it can come off very, very uh, easily or just go out of, it just look disproportioned or something. So painting some accents in that jacquard paint, it's a gold paint. Didn't have any issues with this particular paint either, so it dried perfectly fine. So I just did the eyes, the horns and the teeth in this gold paint. And this is like the best gold paint that I've ever used. So highly, highly recommend um, jacquard paints when you're looking for something that's metallic. Really, really good quality, highly pigmented and never had an issue um, drying and also goes on really, really smoothly as well. So highly recommend it if you can find it anywhere. The one thing to remember about the jacquard paints is sometimes they don't cover very well so the coverage isn't really um, as, as good as like a thick acrylic paint so you will have to do a few layers especially if you want like a true true color um, so I usually put about three to four layers of paint especially this gold one for some reason is very kind of thin and, and the coverage isn't that great um, but uh, yeah, it, it, again, but it's really good though, so I highly recommend it. It's, it's, one, when, once it's been um, applied properly and enough layers, it's really deep and has a lot of um, depth to it. And onto the teeth, and um, I'm using a, quite a small brush just so I can actually paint on the teeth and not everywhere else. And I like to use my pinky to steady my hand, uh, it's a good little tip if you have an unsteady hand or if you um, need a little bit more balance, I always put my pinky on things, just be careful that you're not sticking it on wet surfaces, <laughs> like I've done many many times because then you have to go back and repaint the area that you've just smudged. Moving on to the hair and I'm just uh, painting a little outline of where I wanted the hair to be. Uh, you can see just how thick this paint is compared to the jacquard paints uh, when I painted on. It's um, quite, the it's not going on a lot uh, whereas the jacquard one was sort of pulling and you could swirl it around a bit. So, um, so you can see how the same sort of texture with the red and how it dries as well. So the red has quite a lot of um, brush streaking uh, which is why I actually chose this paint in the first place because I wanted that sort of look to it. Um, and that's why I went with the black for this one as well and it has like a slight brown tinge to it so it's not like jet jet black um, which I thought would work really well with the red uh, as well. So I just went ahead and painted it uh, with different size brushes obviously uh, just making sure that I'm not going outside of the lines when I um, get to the edges and making sure that I don't paint over things that I shouldn't. Um, and then I went ahead and painted the inside as well, obviously beforehand, because uh, I don't really like unfinished masks, I guess, um, where it's just like a, the resin inside. So I like something to be, whether it's material or painted or something. The only problem with painted is sometimes you get quite stinky paint and that means you'll be breathing in paint. But I don't tend to wear my masks. I sort of put them on the wall. I like the look of them on walls uh, rather than wearing them. Um, so yeah, this is where the problem arose on the head. It, there was like certain spots that you can see that were just not drying. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in any footage that I got, but um, yeah, hopefully you picked it up with any footage that I have from here on.
and just adding those hair highlights as well with um, a smaller brush I don't have the steadiest of hands uh, I need to work on my brush work a bit more uh, which hopefully I can do this year and that way I can um, just refine the way I paint things and maybe take commissions in the future of painting services for masks or figures or something like that something that I would be really interested in So if you're interested in the video of how I fixed um, the paint work in this, uh, let me know in the comments as well. And I have the footage for it. I just didn't include too much of it in this um, video. So if you're interested in that, I can go into some more detail about that. Just let me know in the comments and I can make it for you. So I like the look of the sort of wettish oily hair that goes down the front of um, the Hanya. I like the way it looks. I think it makes it look a bit more dramatic and a bit more kind of demony, if that makes sense. So I just squiggled some lines on for the hair and I, I think it really finished off the way uh, the Hanya mask looked and just added that little bit more um, detail to it. So here we have all finished. I'm pretty proud of this piece, so it's my second mask and really, really happy with the way it turned out. Alright guys, that is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any video requests, you can leave it in the comments down below. You can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!